Hey guys, my name is Vardhan and on behalf of Edureka, I welcome you all to this webinar on data warehousing and business intelligence. I'll be your instructor for today and I will be teaching you why any company needs to do business intelligence and thus thereby do data warehousing. So without wasting much time, let me show you the agenda for today. So these will be the topics that I will be covering in today's session and this will be the order in which I'll be covering them. Okay, the first topic that I'll be talking about is what is the need for business intelligence? And after that, I will talk about the need for data warehousing. So business intelligence is one of the most important aspects for any company to grow well and to do good, right? And data warehousing is among the most important activities of business intelligence. So that's why these two things are interlinked and that's the connection these two have. So you can think of uh, data warehousing to be a kind of a subset of business intelligence. So I will talk about these two things and after that, I will talk about the key terminologies that are related to data warehousing architecture. Right, and some of the key terminologies are those of uh, OLTP and OLAP. The differences between the two, okay? The OLTP is somewhat very similar to the databases, and OLAP is what represents data warehousing. So when you understand the difference between the two, you will also understand the difference between a database and a data warehouse. You will also understand why a data warehouse suits business intelligence more than a database. So that's about these two topics, and then we'll talk about ETL. So ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. ETL is a strategy to convert your data from your database onto your data warehouse, right? So moving the data from one place to another, that's all done by ETL. So we'll talk about ETL in detail, all right? And after that, I'll talk about what a data mart is, and then what's a metadata. Now, these two things are uh, two topics which I can only explain once I have given you an introduction to the other topics, all right? So any of your any doubts that you have during the session, you can ask me at that time, and I'll uh, clear them right away. And once I'm done teaching about all these four different topics that are related to data warehousing architecture, I will show you the complete architecture and the complete life cycle of data and what kind of insights your company can get and what kind of advantages you can get out of data warehousing, right? So data warehousing architecture will be the last topic in my presentation. And after my presentation, I will show you a demonstration of creating a data warehouse where I will import data from a database and store it in a data warehouse, right? So this will be the topics of uh, today's session. I hope uh, the agenda is clear to everyone. If you all agree with me, please acknowledge that and also do acknowledge the fact if you can hear my voice and see my screen. So if everything is fine, I can get started with the session. You can acknowledge and put any of your doubts or queries during the session inside the chat box that you see on your right side. So I'm getting a couple of acknowledgements from everyone. All right. So Rodney says yes. Rajesh says yes. All right, guys. And a couple more people are also able to hear my voice and see my screen. Great. So since the agenda is clear, everyone, let me get started with the first topic. That is what is the need for business intelligence? Okay, so we'll understand why business intelligence and data warehousing are among the fundamental and the foundation for any company's success. So why do we have to go for business intelligence, right? Business intelligence is the activity which contributes to the growth of any company. And there are also so many MNCs which have been established over the past few decades. Now, how did that happen? They just didn't happen by luck, right? So they, they were all small ideas. They were small companies that started with a small idea and then they grew bigger. So that's what any company that wants to do good that's what they do. The first thing is they plan what they want to be and depending on their plan, then they start gathering data. Okay. Now once they gather data, they know they are in the right direction now. So they know what to do and how to do it. And then they do further data analysis on that. They make up their plans and they come up with strategies. They come to know what is the important thing that needs to be done and all these things. So when they finally have a concrete plan, then they execute it into business action. And once those actions are taken, then they're all good, right? That's when the business starts to grow. That's when the company gets back all their uh, investment. And that's how actually any company grows. So any company that has uh, done well over the past few decades, uh, be it Microsoft or Google or Facebook or Amazon, Salesforce, all of these companies that have all grown from small ideas and they've become something big, right? And any startup that's also trying to do great nowadays, even they have to adopt the same strategy and the same plan. This is a very common thing and this is something that everyone knows, okay? But this is not what I've, uh, you know, come to teach all in this session. What I've come to teach all is something about data warehousing and that is one of the most important strategies or activities which is part of business intelligence, right? So before I talk about uh, data warehousing, let me go into details of uh, business intelligence. So what exactly is business intelligence? BI is the act of transforming raw or operational data into useful information for business analysis, right? So BI here stands for business intelligence. That's the short form. And yeah, it is the act of transforming any raw or operational data. So when we say raw or operational data, it's basically the data that you've collected, the data that you have about your business. So it can be even if your company is starting from scratch, then whatever data you've gathered. So you've kind of got to take that data and convert that into useful information, 
right so that you can plan and make strategies and if you're a company that's well established then you have to look at your past results how your uh, company has done over the past six months or the past uh, the last quarter or the last year or uh, two and then make come up with proper plans for your future so when you do this then this entire act is called as business intelligence and uh, how does it work and this working of business intelligence is with respect to the IT technology okay so BI which is based on data warehouse technology okay this is the key term that you got to remember the BI is based on data warehouse technology it extracts information from a company's operational systems and the data that is extracted is first transformed and when we say it's transformed it's cleaned and integrated and then it's loaded into data warehouses now the thing here is there will be data in many forms it can be in the form of flat files it can be in the form of databases if it's a running company and if you're trying to do good okay if you've been in the working for a number of years then you'll have data about your past success about your uh, sales data your marketing data your expenditure all these things you might have stored in any form maybe in the form of databases maybe in the form of uh, excel flat files so all these things so these make up your data source right so you have this data over here and this data is first transformed okay it's of course it's first extracted then inside the data warehouse it's transformed which is cleaned and integrated okay so once it's transformed then it's ready for you to do your data visualization or data analysis it's in a form in which you can get insights and this is the data which the end users will be using so you will have your data analysts in your company right your data scientists your data analysts and all the other people your managers your uh, and the other guys who call the big shots in your company so all these people they'll be getting they'll be using this data to make your analysis and that's the role of data warehouse. It is sandwiched between these two endpoints, and this serves as the basis or the springboard for success. And finally, since the data is credible, it is used for business insights. Yeah, this is again something that I just spoke about, right? So now you'll have a better understanding of uh, how business intelligence works, right? So you all know that business intelligence is something important, and uh, how important and how good it is, how does it work, is what I've explained in this slide. So do you all guys all agree with me here? Anybody has any doubts? Rodney, Rajesh, Jacob. Okay, pretty good. All right, nice. Okay, so I have a question here from Jacob. Jacob is asking, is data warehouse the only thing that's needed? Okay, Jacob, this is just an overview of uh, business intelligence. Okay, this is a rough diagram, and it's actually not just data warehouse. So data warehouse is something that I'm concentrating on today's session. Okay, so that's why we have data warehouse. There's another important step called as data visualization. So that visualization is done by end users, right? Since it's done over here, it's not mentioned in this diagram. But what you got to remember is Data warehousing is uh, probably the springboard. Without data warehousing, the visualization cannot be done, and the data from the uh, sources, right, from here, it cannot be directly used for any other purpose. So that's the role of data warehousing. So that's what a data warehouses, and uh, yeah, are you clear, Jacob? Now, okay, great, that's fine. So uh, let me go to the next slide then. Now that you know what exactly is business intelligence, let's go into details of data warehousing. Let's understand the challenges in achieving business intelligence. So first of all, why should we use a data warehouse? Because data collected from various sources and stored in various databases cannot be directly visualized. Okay, now look at this image here. In this diagram, you have uh, different databases like Oracle, you have the SAP base, you have the uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and then you have other databases like uh, SQL database and all these things. Okay, you can also have flat files in this list. So all these make up your data sources. You as a company can store data everywhere. So if you're a small company, you might just deal with Microsoft Excel and you might just use small analysis tools okay but if you're a big company that has a lot of data coming in so if you're a retail company then you'll have to store details about your sales your marketing and what's been your growth so for all these purposes you need big databases right so all the data will be stored in all these databases okay now the problem is some teams in your company might be using one database and the other teams may be using another database now the biggest problem that uh, people would find while they are doing visualization or uh, doing analysis is data is there in different databases and they'll have a tough time integrating them right now that's where data warehouse comes in and that's where data warehouse scores data warehouse it integrates data from all these databases and then processes that data and brings it in a form which is very easy to do visualization okay that's what the second point says the data first needs to be integrated and then processed before visualization takes place now this is the problem that you have with the regular databases okay the data from here they cannot be directly used for visualization and since data warehouse can do that since it can integrate data from multiple data warehouses and since that data can be processed easily since it brings the data in a form which can be easily visualized that's where data browse has the advantage that's where it scores so that's the problem with database and that's the uh, advantage that data warehouse has in fact data warehouse is more like an act it's a discipline which is followed by people okay these are actions which are adopted and uh, strategies which are taken okay that's what data warehouses and that is the role it plays in us doing very good visualization all right so now this should be a little more clear for you people 
as to why data warehouse plays the key role in the whole BI aspect, right? Okay, great. Let's go to the next uh, slide then. Now let's understand in detail what a data warehouse is. Now a data warehouse is a central location where consolidated data from multiple locations, okay, or databases. That's what locations mean. From multiple locations are stored. Now this means this is exactly what I explained earlier, right? So you have a data that's coming in from multiple data sources. You have all the data. You consolidate all the data into one single place, and the data warehouse is maintained separately from an organization's operational database. Now DWH here stands for data warehouse, all right? So and here it says that data warehousing is maintained separately from an organization's operational database. Okay, and uh, yeah, the DWH here stands for data warehousing. And the reason a data warehouse is uh, stored separately from the operational database is because the data should not get affected. So you will have your operational data on one end, okay, where all your legacy data will be stored, where all your even probably even your real-time data will be stored. So all your transactions, all your sales, all your uh, marketing, all your operations data, all these will be stored in one place. And in during the act of data warehousing, where you're doing that when you're uh, making analysis, when you're when you're using that data, you don't want that to get corrupted, right? So it's more like a backup. So for backup purpose. Your operational data is separated. So you have your operational data, you keep it in one area, and then you create a new database. Okay. In fact, it's called a data warehouse. Okay. So you get all the uh, data from multiple sources or maybe from a single source, get it into a data warehouse, and from here you do your analytics. So the uh, process of getting the operational data into your data warehouse, that's called extraction, transform, and loading. Okay. Now, when you've done these three things, you form your data warehouse. And from your data warehouse, you use the OLAP strategy. Okay. So OLAP stands for online analytical processing. So you use this OLAP uh, strategy or well this uh, analytics processing for the business users to do analysis. So it's there in the name, right? It stands for analytical processing. So the business users, what are analysis they want to do? They do it because there is uh, the option of OLAP. And then along with the analysis, they can also do visualization. For visualization, you have uh, various other tools like Tableau and ClickView. Right, there are some amazing tools. So you can get this uh, data, you can get it into the data warehouse and the data warehouse also it can be stored in some kind of database. You can store this uh, data back into some kind of Oracle or uh, SQL Server or maybe even in Excel. And when you've stored there, then you can do your uh, OLAP activities there. And uh, also you can import that data into your various uh, visualization tools like Tableau or uh, ClickView. And thus you can, you know, get insights. You can get uh, insights into your data. You can deliver presentations uh, during your board meetings. You can show your findings to your uh, superiors or your managers. You can do all these things. So that's what a data warehouse is. Okay. And then the next point we have here is end users access it whenever any information is needed. Yeah, so this is again uh, the same thing, right? So once the data comes in from the operational system, it's stored in the data warehouse, it stays there. So this data is not going to change. So whatever uh, change you want to do to your operational data, that can be done, okay? You can modify this data, you can update it, you can delete data here, you can do all these things. But once your data comes into your data warehouse, it cannot be deleted, okay? You can maybe modify things. The worst case scenario, you can modify data here, okay? But it's highly advisable not to. But of course, you can. So that's the thing. But yeah, the key point you got to notice: the end users can use it anytime. They can probably access a data that is 10 years old or 20 years old and all these things. And uh, how can they do it? By using OLAP. So they can do the analysis and they can run it over uh, different times, right? So these are a series of snapshots. So based on you can find uh, data analysis like uh, what happened at this particular day on this particular year all these things you can see what kind of uh, product was sold how many customers bought which product all these details can be easily gathered and uh, accessed from here so that's what we say when you know uh, the data can be accessed at any time by the end users or the business users so the business users here are, are typically those of uh, managers uh, it can be managers or people who are uh, leading board meetings who are making a plan for the next quarter or the next uh, half year or the next one year and all these things so guys, yeah, that, that was a question which Jacob asked guys. So Jacob asked who will be the end users, who will be the business users. So that's what uh, they are, okay? People will be using this data. It can be even data analysts or uh, data scientists and uh, all those people, right guys? Are you clear, Jacob? Okay, great. And uh, there's a note, okay? The data warehouse here, it is not loaded every time when new data is added to the database. So what this means is, you have data coming in to your operational data, okay? This operational data will get updated every minute probably every second. If you have a 24 seven uh, working sales team, then they'll be making sales round the clock, right? So as and when any uh, sale happens, the data will be added to your database, to your operational data, but that not necessarily needs to be added to your data warehouse also. So what you find in your data warehouse is legacy data, right? It's historical data, which you can use to perform analysis or uh, all those find insights. 
the operational data, if you have new data coming in here, this has to be imported and this has to be moved to your data warehouse first. And then once it's moved to your data warehouse, from here it can be used for analysis and all these things by your uh, end users. So that's what this uh, diagram here means and that's what the last point also means. Okay, data warehouse is not loaded. Every time new data is added to this database. Okay, so uh, I hope it's all clear Rodney. Rodney and uh, Rajesh. Okay, great. So fine then if you guys have understood what a data warehouse is, I can go to my next slide and uh, talk about the next uh, topic. So that was about data warehouse. Now uh, let's look at the advantages of a data warehouse when we compare it to any uh, database or uh, just regular flat files and all these things. The first advantage is that strategic questions can be answered by studying trends. So this is the biggest benefit that you can get right your uh, data analysts and data scientists they can answer strategic questions they can read the past data they can uh, predict your future also by coming up with uh, by having their uh, strategic questions be answered because trends can be analyzed uh, using the data warehouse. It's basically the data that is stored in your operational data also, but it's just that it's uh, easier to study trends on your data warehouse rather than database. Okay, because uh, Rajesh here has a question, guys. Rajesh is asking, why not a database? What is it that a data warehouse can do that a database cannot do? So, uh, guys, that's what I was answering. Correct, Rajesh. Remember, the first thing is, let me go back to my previous slide for this. Okay, so you have your operational data here. So you have all your data here which is probably legacy which is even real time all these things will be present here but in your data warehouse you'll only have your legacy data you will only have the historical data you won't have real time data here but that doesn't mean it's not you know it's any lesser than operational data since you have your data completely here you have the freedom to do your analysis and you also have your freedom to do your data visualization okay so that's one advantage and the other advantage uh, with the data warehouse is that your data will be coming in from multiple sources, right? We'll have data coming in from multiple sources. Your tables will not be related to each other. Even if it's from the same database, you'll have multiple tables for uh, multiple teams, right? And you can't uh, easily integrate all these uh, tables because they'll be separated. Okay. That is one big problem that uh, you will face when you're uh, doing the analysis or visualization. But uh, in a data warehouse, it will be stored such that all the data will be interlinked, right? It'll be related by using schemas or all these things. So you have a different schemas like star schema, uh, snowflake schema, galaxy schema and all these things. So you have all these uh, dimensions and facts, all these concepts using which you can relate your uh, tables. You can relate your data. So all your uh, rows and all your columns here which are unrelated, which are uh, stored in separate databases or in separate uh, flat files, uh, separate tables, they cannot be integrated. They cannot be stored together. So there will be a relation. So every single uh, row or every single table will be linked with each other and when you do an analysis like that then you can probably pull data across the uh, database right. So whatever data is stored across the various databases you can pull all that data and link them all together by running one query and you can get all those details in just uh, by just running one single query using your data warehouse. So that is the advantage uh, uh, Rajesh right. So did you get it Rajesh? This is the second advantage. Okay, that's why business users they they prefer to use data coming in from a data warehouse. So this is a more structured and this is a more related data when you compare it with the operational data and the uh, basic data source. All right, fine, fine, fine. Very good, very good, Rajesh. I hope you uh, you've cleared your doubts. I hope that's the same thing with even uh, others, right? Okay, even more clear. Great, great. Rodney is telling now. I've got it even more clear. Fine, fine. Very nice. That that was a very good question. Good you uh, asked me there. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you stopped me because I could explain it in a better way. So anyways moving on that was about uh, data warehouse and uh, talking about the advantage of data warehouse. Uh, I spoke about uh, the fact that you know you can answer strategic questions by studying all the trends by uh, studying your past data. You can you will have uh, all the graphs you can have the uh, pictorial representations right. You can see what was uh, whether the trend is growing or not which product is getting sold uh, how better is getting sold all these things you can easily read by uh, using a data warehouse because data warehouse makes your data uh, more readable information. So that's the thing. So you guys must know the difference between data and information, right? So information is something that is processed. Processed data is called information. So information is uh, easier to understand, easier to relate to and easier to use. Now that's what uh, data warehouse does. It takes you one step closer to information, right? So that's the advantage. And uh, yeah, the other thing is data warehousing is faster and it's more accurate. Yes, this is something that's uh, completely true because in your database you'll have loads of data. You'll of course you'll have uh, uh, historical data and uh, real-time data, but the thing is it's not going to be as fast as a uh, data warehouse. 
data warehouse you will have uh, links there you will have links you will have tables you will have relations between the various tables and because of all these things you can easily gather and you can uh, easily access data here and the data that is uh, gathered from here it's also more accurate because there won't be much change because there's not going to be any question of uh, real time data coming in and uh, changing things around right so you may so whatever uh, you know processing or analysis it's uh, done based on the past data that is stored in the data warehouse and that makes this data more accurate it makes it more stable so stability is the key word here and uh, stability is not something that you can uh, have all the time in database but uh, you will have it with the data warehouse so that's the uh, second big advantage and in fact there are uh, many more advantages right so data warehousing is uh, something that you guys will understand when you start implementing so in the demo session that i'll show you later today that time you will understand you know you'll understand the other advantages with uh, data warehousing okay and one important point that you need to notice that data warehouse is not a product that a company can go and purchase okay it needs to be designed and uh, it depends entirely on the company's requirement so like i said your database is something uh, it's a necessity right your database or your where you're storing your data your data source is something that you have to have and then your data warehouse is something that is designed and uh, which completely depends on your company's requirement based on your data source based on the requirements that you want to get out of your data source out of uh, the data that you have in your data source you can come up with a way to design your data warehouse right so data warehouse is more of a concept and it's a strategy and it's not an end product it's not a tool or something that you can use you have multiple tools to implement data warehousing and uh, the thing you got to notice data warehousing is not a product okay so it's a strategy that you adopt to make your data more readable and uh, make your data in a better fashion okay so that's the uh, biggest advantage with data warehouse so look at this guy here okay he'll just uh, run one query on the data warehouse okay now what the data warehouse will do the data is taken from the operational systems all right and in fact if there are multiple operational systems then all those uh, multiple data from multiple operational systems will be integrated together and then that will be standardized and uh, any inconsistencies there in that data will be removed okay now these are the three important things the data is taken from the operational systems and uh, that data if there are multiple operational systems those will be integrated okay and then the data will be standardized and any inconsistencies will be removed and uh, once all these three things are done then it can be stored in an easy format which can be uh, you know which is very suitable for analysis and access and that is what a data warehouse is so whenever he runs a query on this kind of a data warehouse which is a process and which is ready in such a fashion you can get the result quickly and uh, this uh, result will also be more accurate all right so this is the big advantage with the uh, data warehouse so i hope uh, this is clear it's a pretty simple concept here and uh, it's just an overview of what i explained in the previous slides right right jacob rajesh rodney all right okay so moving on there are uh, four important properties that a data warehouse has okay and uh, th these four properties are based on what bill inman said bill inman is the father of data warehousing and uh, initially he defined data warehouse as a subject oriented integrated time variant and non volatile collection of data in support of the management's decision making process okay so when we say subject oriented it means that the data will be categorized and stored by the business subject rather than by the application now let me get back to this point after i finish these three okay now this is the most uh, complicated point okay now talking about integration right he said that data is integrated so the meaning here is data on a given subject is collected from disparate sources and stored in a single place so this is something you people know data is collected from multiple sources and they are all stored in one single place so you don't have to uh, you know go about searching for data in uh, different tables or different uh, sources and all those things and then your data it is time variant it is stored as a series of snapshots each representing a period of time so when you do your analysis you can do it based on a series of snapshots of time okay you can see what was your uh, company status on this month uh, that year or on this month this year what is the progress that's been made or if it's not a progress if it's the same if uh, your uh, growth has been stagnated then you can find out what are the metrics what are the reasons why that has happened you can find all these things and you can look at all those details from a time approach right from a time variant uh, approach so that's what a data warehouse uh, the advantage here is okay that's one of the properties and the advantages that you have and then data is non volatile the data in a data warehouse is not updated or deleted so this is what is the other property that i mentioned earlier once a data comes into a data warehouse it cannot be deleted or uh, neither can it be changed in fact it can be updated but the uh, process of uh, having to update it is a little complicated okay but of course it can be updated and deleted so that's the thing but it's highly recommended not to update 
okay so that's the advantage with the data warehouse and since it will not be changed there's no question of it getting corrupted and that's why uh, doing analysis and all these things are you know a better option now getting back to the first point we said that it is subject oriented right data is categorized and stored by business subject rather than by the application now what this means is the data here will be stored or uh, the data that you will you know, that you retrieve from a data warehouse right you will get it in the form that you wanted to now if you want to give me an example of that let's say that we are dealing with a retail company and in my retail company i have a marketing team i have a sales team and i have a operations team and my uh, sales team kind of uh, keeps keeps track of all the sales that happens over a period of time okay let's say the last one month whatever sales they have done they have stored all those uh, details and then you have your operations team which will make sure there is a smooth running of uh, all the process once the sale is done there are various other activities involved right like shipping the product and uh, you know all these things shipping and coordinating the uh, transferring activities and all these things and then your marketing team is uh, someone is uh, probably that team which would take care of uh, your sales which would ensure that uh, the right leads come in to ensure that the right uh, people get the right uh, kind of uh, service and it's all about acquiring more such sales right so your marketing team is on top of the funnel and uh, they do all these things now if you want to integrate all these details if you want one single view of them and you want to find details such that in this particular month what was your uh, sales and uh, what was the kind of operations that was uh, done right what kind of service was given to those customers and from how they became our customers so when we uh, the question of how they became something related to marketing so if you have a question like this where three factors are involved then at that point of time it's your data warehouse which comes to the rescue because when your uh, question is uh, related to this particular time and uh, these three different uh, metrics sales marketing and operations then all these things can be integrated and you can get one single view from your data warehouse this is what a database lacks correct so uh, you know uh, yeah, integrating all your different data sources and uh, you know storing them together and making them ready for uh, any time access is the biggest advantage and uh, the most important property of a data warehouse so if you guys had any problem in the previous slides then i'm pretty sure this is something you have really understood after this slide because uh, this is probably the epitome of uh, data warehouse right these three properties if you understand these four uh, properties then you are pretty much ready to understand the next part the next uh, you are ready to go to the next step in data warehousing right so by now you should have understood how important all this is why you know how important business intelligence is and uh, what kind of role this data warehouse plays you can just think of how humongous a uh, deal a data warehouse is correct yeah so a couple of people are uh, satisfied with that so uh, now that we've spoken about the properties let's go to the next slide and okay now we have to talk about key terminologies okay so right now we want us to data warehousing from a higher level okay now let's uh, dig deep let's go to more basics here okay let's understand the key terminologies that are related and that are involved in a data warehousing so first of all we have uh, OLTP and OLAP okay now there are four things which I will uh, talk about the uh, differences between OLTP and OLAP okay then I'll talk about EDL I'll talk about data mart and then finally about metadata okay so let me go to the first topic that is OLTP versus OLAP okay so in uh, this part which is OLTP OLTP stands for online transaction processing okay now this is something that uh, is a representation of that of a database if you're running any kind of uh, queries on your database then that's called online transaction processing okay and then OLAP stands for online analytical processing and this is the property of a data warehouse so any kind of query or any kind of analysis that you run on your data warehouse that's called as an OLAP activity correct so let's go into the differences between the two so first of all any data that is stored in a relational database right in an uh, which involves OLTP that contains the current data as well as past data okay current data as well as past data but with respect to a data warehouse and uh, while performing an OLAP you will be dealing with only historical data here okay it contains only historical data and the data that will be stored in your database okay when you use the OLTP then those queries will be useful in running your business okay when you have to run your business like if you want to store the data of uh, the number of sales that has happened today like every time a sales happens then your uh, records in your database has to be updated right so that's what we say so when you update your record with the latest uh, details of your customer then that is what is uh, the meaning of useful in running the business okay but an OLAP is something that is useful in analyzing the business so here the kind of uh, activity that you would do is 
that of uh, finding out details like at what time how many customers bought the products or at what time which customer bought uh, which all products all these kind of questions will be answered with the help of OLAP okay and then the whole OLTP uh, model of accessing data of uh, accessing or querying data on a database it's based on the entity relationship model okay but uh, whereas with the uh, data warehouse it's based on the uh, star schema or uh, the snowflake schema and the fact constellation schema okay so it's called also called as the galaxy schema so all these three things will come into picture okay and then your uh, relational database it provides a primitive and a highly detailed data so since you'll have uh, one database if you run one kind of a query like a select star from this particular table then it would give you all the details that is stored right so you cannot filter too many details with respect to the data that is stored in your database okay of course you can but the level of uh, you know the filtering and analysis that you can do is uh, not that much so the data that you will get back uh, from your query right the result that you will get back from your query will be highly detailed okay and it will not be exactly what you want so it will not be that accurate but uh, whereas with uh, the OLAP when you do an OLAP on a data warehouse it provides a summarize and the consolidated data and it will point to you exactly what you want to look for correct so it will uh, it's a very processed data and it uh, points to one particular aspect which matters the most so that's what this is and then the uh, OLTP, you use this for writing data into the database. Okay, so ever, like I said, uh, the same sales example. Whenever a new sales happens, your database has to be updated, right, with the new uh, records of the product sold, of the uh, customer who bought the product, and uh, all these things. So you basically uh, use it for uh, writing data into the database. But your data warehouse is primarily used for reading data from the data warehouse. So writing to the data warehouse is something that is done so that you can do the reading from the data warehouse okay the primary concept here is to read the data from the data warehouse and uh, to do the analysis and all the, the visualization activities but with the database it's more of uh, writing the data into the database all right and uh, the size so speaking of the size a database's size would range anywhere between 100 mb to 1 gb okay and this is also a very vague number 100 mb is a very less number i would say and uh, 1 gb is also very less so it would typically be much more than this but compared to this uh, range if you look at a data warehouse a data warehouse size ranges from 100 GB to 1 TB correct so your data warehouse will have all the historic data and, and it will have all the relationships between the different data right such that uh, you can do your uh, analysis straight away so since it makes all the uh, data more efficient and stuff the data here the uh, size ranges from 100 GB to almost 1 TB so that is what a data warehouse is and that's the power of a data warehouse all right and uh, I can actually show you the difference between the two in today's uh, demo session okay later during the session I'll show you that the size of the source file that I have I will show you the different sizes of uh, the two files that I'll be using as a source and then after they are processed the data that I'll store it in my data warehouse I'll show you what is the size of that data so there will be a big difference between the two okay and the data warehouse will be more than the database I will uh, show you that aspect later all right so and that's about uh, this point and then yeah of course this will be fast okay database is uh, fast and it provides high performance all right so your data warehouse of course it's not as fast as your database but it's highly flexible it's highly flexible because it gives you uh, different uh, views so you have something called as the OLAP cube right so using the OLAP cube you can uh, get the you can look at insights from different angles different perspectives and different views of data you will get so that is the uh, big advantage here okay and the number of records that is accessed it is in tens but whereas with the data warehouse the number of records accessed is in millions all right an example of this can be all the bank transactions made by a particular customer so if there is one customer and whatever transactions he's made he will get all those uh, you know all those details right so supposing take the example of any email statement that you request for any email statement or a bank's account statement all these things so they are an example of OLTP so whatever details are present in the database those will be given to you but whereas uh, the bank transactions made by a customer at a particular time okay this is a more filtered query and the answer also will be uh, very accurate and point you to exactly that particular uh, question so that's what an OLAP is so it's not going to give you an overview here it's going to exactly point you to what you want it's not very much in detail but it's more accurate correct so that's what an OLAP uh, is and that's the difference between OLTP and OLAP okay so these are the two strategies that are used for uh, you know accessing data OLTP is used for uh, accessing data in, in a database and OLAP is used for accessing that data in a data warehouse all right so uh, I hope even this slide is clear to everyone all right guys okay if you have any doubts then that will be cleared by uh, this uh, slide okay because the examples 
are there for both these strategies. So if you want more examples of uh, an old TP, then one would be that of a supermarket server which records every single product purchased at that market. Okay, so every single product in their history or probably in the last one month, all these things can be accessed uh, using your uh, OLTP, okay, uh, from your uh, database. Uh, you don't have options to do much of filtering here. And then another example is that of a bank server which records every time a transaction is made for a particular account. Okay, every time a transaction is made in a particular account, the data will be uh, updated in that uh, table and uh, you can query that kind of uh, data and you'll get that uh, result. Okay, another example is that of a railway reservation server which records the transaction of a passenger. So whatever activities a passenger does, so all these things will be recorded by the reservation server, right? So this is one example, but when you look at the OLAP, they will be much more detailed. The queries here will be much more detailed and the answers will be much more accurate and uh, very crisp, okay? So an example is uh, that of a bank manager wants to know how many customers are utilizing the ATM of his branch, okay? Because maybe based on that, he may take a call whether to continue that uh, ATM or relocate that ATM to a different place, right? So this guy, this bank manager would want to, you know, first of all, understand if there's any use in having the ATM in that place. Are people using it, correct? If people are using it, then uh, how many people are using it? At what time are they using it? Or would it be better to have the ATM in a different location where it's much more easier for people to access it? So all these kind of questions will be answered only if you have uh, OLAP in place, okay? Only when you have a data warehouse in place, not with the database. So another example is that of an insurance company that wants to know the number of policies each agent has sold, okay? This will help in uh, better performance management of agents. So you'll have multiple agents uh, in your company and you'd want to know their performance, right? You know, you would, you'd want to know who is the best performing agent. Uh, you would want to know how they are performing. Why is uh, this person performing better? You can, you know, optimize each of their performances. So all these things can be done with the help of a data warehouse and they can uh, be done with the help of OLAP, right? The OLAP strategy, the OLAP activity that is done on a data warehouse. So that is the difference between the two, right? So I hope you're getting the differences here, guys. Right, OLTP and OLAP. Okay, since it's all clear, let me go to the next slide. Now, the uh, second important uh, terminology that we have with data warehouse is that of ETL, extract, transform, and load. So by going by the definition, ETL is the process of extracting the data from various sources, transforming this data to meet your requirements, and then loading the data into a target data warehouse. Okay, you're extracting the data from here, right? You're extracting it, and then you're transforming it into the way you want in a more readable fashion, in a more relatable fashion. Then once that is done, you load that data into a data warehouse. And the whole process of uh, getting the data from your data source to your data warehouse, this is done by the ETL, the activities of extraction, extraction, transformation, and loading. So we have uh, popular tools for uh, for this very process. So you have tools like Talend, uh, Informatica, you have uh, Irvin, all these things. And Informatica and uh, Talent are probably the most popular tools for this process for extraction, transformation, and loading data into a data warehouse, right? So uh, this is something that uh, you should have understood by now. Any doubts, guys? Because I don't want to waste much time. I want to go to the next slide and uh, teach the next concept. Okay, great. So the next one is Data Mart. Okay, now if you've understood uh, so far till uh, ETL, then half your job is done because Data Mart is uh, something that's very close to a data warehouse and uh, you don't have that much of a difference when it compared to a data warehouse. But the basic difference between the two is the data mart is uh, just the same data warehouse itself, but a smaller version. Okay, so let's look at the line, the definition here. The data mart is a smaller version of the data warehouse, which deals with a single subject. Okay, the data marts are focused on one area. Hence, they draw the data from limited number of sources. And the time taken to build a data marts is very less compared to the time taken to build a data warehouse. Now, to give you an example or an explanation of this, in your data warehouse, you will have all your details, right? All your uh, details that you have. So this itself is more refined, okay? But your data marts are uh, smaller versions of that data warehouse, which is uh, used to satisfy only certain uh, users. Supposing you have one particular uh, user base, okay? Uh, that is your sales team or your sales manager who wants to use only your uh, sales data. Then that can be done with the help of a data mart. And similarly, you have uh, a marketing team who wants to uh, access all the marketing data. Then that can be done by using a data mart, okay? And then again, you have other operations team that wants to do, uh, who wants to access the operations data. Then you can give them only access to that data by using a data mart separately, okay? Now, the need for data mart is, first of all, 
your data warehouse will store all the data okay your sales data marketing data operations data so all the data coming from different data sources so you'll have multiple data sources right all that will be stored in one single place and from here this will again act like separate data sources right so for the sales team this will act as a data source for a marketing team this will act as a data source and then for the operations team this uh, mart will act as a data source now the now answering the question as to why we need them it's to you know probably give more security to enable more security and uh, integrity because since all your data will be there in your data warehouse and if you let all your uh, your entire company access the data warehouse they'll get access to all the details and all the uh, uh, all the work that is done by other teams okay so there might be multiple teams and there will be multiple strategies which you might not want to reveal to other teams so at that kind of a time you can divide your data warehouse such that only this particular uh, users okay your sales users or a particular user base gets access to only certain data from your data warehouse so at that kind of a time a data mart is useful or you can have a second data mart for only another set of uh, user base for example your marketing users so they will get access to only the marketing data from your data warehouse right and then your operations data similarly uh, which can be accessed only by your operations folks so that's the uh, different uh, advantages that you have since the data is all divided it's all stored separately and different people have access to different uh, uh, different parts of your data warehouse so this probably brings more advantages right so that's the data mart and that's why i told you that uh, you know if you've understood so far till etl then half your job is done but data mart is something that uh, uh, that extends the functionality of a data warehouse right so that is the thing and uh, speaking of the differences that is there in this table the data warehouse will store the enterprise wide data right the enterprise or the enterprise wide data whereas data mart will store only departments wise data there will be multiple departments in the whole company in the enterprise and they will store department wide data and then the data warehouse it will have multiple subject areas okay but a data mart will have a single subject area there will be multiple data sources in case of a data warehouse okay but in case of data mart there will be limited data sources in fact there can be just one data warehouse right this will act as a source to your data mart but however we have said limited here because not always do you need a data warehouse there are also instances where your data source itself acts as an input to data mart okay now that is something i'll uh, that you will understand in the next slide okay so just don't get confused when we say that limited data sources it doesn't mean this is the only source they can also come from a data uh, a proper data source like a flat file or from a, a database and all these things all right and then a data warehouse it occupies a large memory this of course because there is a lot of data uh, enterprise wide data will be stored here multiple subject areas will be there because of that there's larger data here at stake and that's why there's a, a greater memory that's occupied okay but in case of your data mart it occupies limited memory because it's very crisp and uh, limited to only a particular department okay and then the other thing is a data warehouse is long, takes longer time to implement but a data mart is a takes very short time to implement because once you have all your data warehouse uh, stuff in place you can easily divide uh, them by just creating different data marts okay so the uh, tough part is your data warehouse so once you've got your data warehouse sorted you can easily form your data marts in fact there's even the other way there are also practices where you first build your data marts and once you've done that after that you create one single repository and that's when you uh, create a data warehouse so there's also two approaches here one is the uh, top bottom approach and the other one is bottom up approach so those are the two things and uh, th i'll go into details about uh, these two approaches in my next session okay of course i can't do it today because we have very limited time all right so uh, moving on to the next slide okay now speaking of the different types of data marts okay this is what i was talking about in the previous slide so you have uh, three different uh, types one is a dependent data mart the other one is independent data mart the third one is hybrid data mart your dependent data mart is uh, the, the data is first extracted from the oltp systems and then populated in the central data warehouse and then from this data warehouse the data travels to the data mart so look at this example okay this is the uh, standard practice or the uh, the default approach where you have an oltp source then you get that data into a data warehouse and then from the data warehouse you form a data mart okay you'll have multiple data marts where each uh, different mart will have uh, particular data from the entire data warehouse okay this is the first regular approach and then you have the independent data mart which is a slight variation compared to dependent so here the data is directly received from the source system okay you don't have a data warehouse in place over here that is what this uh, line means and this is suitable for uh, small organizations or smaller groups within an organization so basically an organization which is very small it might not need to go through the trouble of creating a data warehouse and stuff 
So they can just have an OLTP source and from there they can just get the data in onto a data mart and they can use it for various purposes. Okay, that's what we have an independent data mart for. So that's the difference. It just does not involve a major data warehouse. So directly the data goes to a data mart. In fact, you'll have multiple data marts over here. You'll have data mart 1, data mart 2 and stuff. Okay, which uh, will be coming directly from the OLTP source. And then you have a third type which is the hybrid data mart. So by definition you might know what this is right by uh, the name of by the, the name itself is pretty obvious. It's a combination of these two. The data here is fed from both the OLTP systems as well as the data warehouse. Okay, so look at this uh, example for that uh, instance. You the data here it's coming from the uh, OLTP source as well as from a data warehouse. So this is what the hybrid data mart is and depending on your company depending on the size of your company the requirements of your uh, company or your organization you can choose one of these you can model your entire database and data warehouse in any one of these models either the dependent or the independent data marts or hybrid data marts all right so that's about the different types of data marts so moving on to the next slide we have something called as metadata now people here from programming background or from the uh, technology background you might all be aware of what a metadata is metadata basically is defined as data about data okay it contains data about uh, where your uh, actual data is stored. Supposing you have your raw data, right? Where is that data stored? What is the size of that data? So these are the answers to these kind of questions is what will be present in your metadata. Your metadata will contain the location of your actual data. It will contain the size of your actual data. It will uh, contain details like uh, which was the source it came from and when was it created. All these details will be stored in your metadata, right? So that's what metadata is. Uh, so that's how different uh, metadata is from regular data and uh, metadata is specifically in a data warehouse it defines the source data that is a flat file relational uh, database and other objects. So the reason that uh, we give so much importance to metadata in a data warehouse is because take the example of uh, any company that's having a 24 7 uh, business okay they have a rolling sales team that uh, works throughout the clock uh, the 24 7 they have uh, sales coming in data will be going into your database okay now in this case you cannot always uh, you know keep adding data into your data warehouse because uh, you know that data warehouse is not uh, real time correct so you'll have to manually update your data into your data warehouse uh, probably at every day at a particular time maybe at six o'clock every day in the morning or uh, maybe once in the night at uh, 10 o'clock or at basically at regular intervals you've got to store data into your uh, data warehouse and this whole uh, strategy becomes difficult because you have to do this process every day. So every day when a guy comes in in the morning, he has to look at the new data that has come into your data uh, database, correct? And then from that uh, database, which is data source, he has to add that data to your data warehouse. Now this process becomes difficult. So that is where uh, metadata comes in uh, handy. With metadata, you define the uh, address where your uh, data sources. Okay, you define the address of your uh, uh, flat file from where your data is coming in, or your relational data from where your data is coming in. And then you can also in fact uh, store the metadata of your uh, data warehouse where you want the data to go. So it basically uh, you know saves a lot of your time. Okay, and this is the most common and the most uh, you know unspoken fact about a data warehouse. So any professional that's uh, dealing with data warehouse, he would always be using metadata because it saves a lot of time because every time you cannot be importing data from a database. You always have to get it from your uh, metadata by defining rules and defining your source and your targets. Correct. So metadata saves a lot of your time and this is something I'll uh, show you a demonstration on. Okay. And when I show a demonstration, you will understand uh, how easy it is. So you'll just write the rules such that you have your source over here and then you have your uh, destination over here, your target over here. And once you've written this thing, you don't have to go back here. So every day uh, it might pick up the data from here and it might move to your data warehouse and all these things. It will update all the new details which are present in your database and it will add it into your data warehouse. So that's what a metadata does. It's uh, a very big advantage and it's one of the uh, best strategies that we can go for. Okay. And then the uh, final point here is metadata is used to define which table is source and target and which concept is used to build business logic called transformation to the actual output. Yeah, this is what I told you, right? So it's used to uh, define which is your source and target and how to build your business logic called transformation. So transformation is basically your uh, uh, act of converting your source data into the form that you want to and what is the logic that you use correct. So all the different uh, the filter criteria all the uh, transformation criteria all these things can be also done using the metadata correct. So even the process of uh, getting the data from your uh, source your destination it can involve uh, extra additional uh, steps which can save your time and uh, default process basically so every time you have uh, data in a particular format you might want to store it in a different format 
and for all that purpose you can use a metadata right so uh, since things will all already be defined here the work of metadata is just to get the data from the source defined and uh, do the uh, set of activities that is uh, required and which is already defined it will perform all those activities and it will store it in the place where you want it to so that is the role of a metadata correct so metadata is very very important and it's very very uh, very highly used and it's actually the most important or the let's say it's the epitome of data warehousing okay this is probably the best thing that can happen to data warehousing right so that's the thing about uh, metadata guys now going to the next slide we have the architecture so now that you know everything okay these four uh, terminologies are in, are more than enough for you to understand the architecture okay so let's understand what the architecture is so this is the entire architecture diagram okay so this is what you know data comes in from various sources it can come from either a database or it can come from a flat file and then that data an action of etl will be performed on that data and it will go to the staging area okay this is called the staging area and this is the staging database and the data that is stored over here it is temporary data before the data completely moves to the data warehouse it will be present in this area okay and that is done by using the uh, act of etl and also between uh, moving to the data warehouse the uh, process of etl continues so etl process starts over here and it ends over here okay and between the conversion it is uh, temporarily stored in a staging area and this is uh, most often present inside the etl tool itself okay like uh, your talent or informatica and all these things and then this data will be stored in your data warehouse so whatever is extracted transformed and loaded it will be loaded into your data warehouse and in your data warehouse you will have uh, metadata okay and of course you'll have your raw data and then you'll have your aggregate data okay and uh, this is the reason why a data warehouse is generally you know it's uh, larger in size because it has uh, not just raw data your database which uh, from where the data is coming in it will only have your raw data okay but your data warehouse will have uh, additional stuff here it will have also your metadata and your aggregate data and together all these three things together is what help in you being you uh, you doing your analysis sooner okay this is what uh, powers your ability to do OLAP online analytical processing. Okay, so that's what uh, a data warehouse is and that's what it stores and then this data warehouse You can either uh, your entire company can use a data warehouse or if you want uh, more of a security based uh, uh, Access then you can uh, divide it into different data marts where your sales team and your uh, uh, Different teams like here we have a purchase table and then you have your stock table So these are like three different marts uh, data marts for three tables like uh, sales purchase and stock so you'll have different uh, tables here and different teams can access different set of tables okay your purchase can be something that's uh, uh, used by your operations people right and then this may be something that's used by your uh, sales people and your stock may be again uh, used by your operations or your sales uh, group so that's what each of uh, these here uh, you know defines you have your user group 1 user group 2 and user group 3 and each group will be getting access to different parts of your uh, data warehouse because your data warehouse will be divided into different data marts and your uh, data your different groups we get access to only that data which they want to or which they can get access to correct so this way no group can get access to every data that is present in a data warehouse and there's uh, advanced there's a little more data security in this case okay same thing over here so this group gets access only to this data and this uh, uh, data and this uh, table or this uh, mart right and then this user group gets access to only the data that is present in this mart and in this mart so that's what the uh, entire architecture looks like and this is how the data flow is right so if you guys have understood this much then you're ready to get a demonstration correct guys and this is also my uh, last uh, topic in this presentation so right now I can uh, go to my demonstration and uh, what I'll be doing in my demonstration is I'll be using talent okay so I'll be ex uh, importing data from my uh, database I'll be using I'll be getting it from my Oracle database and I'll be storing that into a data warehouse which can be ready for uh, any kind of analysis or visualization on any other uh, visualization tool okay so this act over here which I'm gonna show you this is what powers your business intelligence right so are you guys ready for the demonstration any doubts here guys okay great Ronnie says he's all ready he's all pumped up all right Ronnie that's very good so Jacob's also ready and uh, so is Rajesh are you Rajesh can I get a yes from you yes very good very good Atta boy Rajesh so let's go so let's uh, go to the next part of my uh, session and this is going to be a demonstration where I'll populate a data warehouse okay I'll be using talent for uh, the data warehouse activities and let's see how we can import data from various data sources and create a data warehouse so for our hands-on session I'll be importing data into my talent BI okay like I said earlier will I'll be using my talent uh, BI for my data warehousing and ETL uh, processes 
and uh, I will create a data warehouse out of using talent BI. Okay. Now the data set that I'll be using is uh, that of uh, a 10,000 row uh, table and a 50,000 row table. Okay. So the uh, there'll be one table having 10,000 customer details. Okay. And then there'll be another table having uh, 50,000 rows of uh, transactions which each of those customers make. Okay. Now based on this data we have to find those customers who have the lowest number of purchases. Okay. So right now my data set is present in my uh, Oracle database. Okay, so I have uh, two tables and both my tables customers table and my transactions table is present in my Oracle database. I also have them in my uh, Excel. So first let me show you how they are present in my Excel file. Okay. Okay, so this is my uh, customer table. As you can see we have uh, all these details, right? We have all these fields here. So we have uh, customer ID. We have customer name. We have uh, the address of that customer city the country is from the uh, contact number and his email address right and uh, if I do this then you can see that there are almost 10,000 uh, fields here so 10,000 rows are there here so this means that you know I have it's a pretty big data set and uh, I can use this in combination with my other table okay so here we have customer ID as the primary key okay and uh, if I go back to my other data set that's my transactions table you can see that I have uh, furthermore fields here. I have those of uh, invoice number. I have uh, stock code. I have description. I have quantity. I have invoice date, unit price, customer ID, and product ID. Okay, so there's a customer ID over here also. So the customer ID is the primary key over there, and this is the foreign key over here. So basically, the customer ID is the same, and I will have to do a lookup to that table with the uh, help of my customer ID. Okay, uh, since these are two different tables, I can create my data warehouse with the help of uh, this particular primary and foreign key uh, concept I can create a link and I can create I can probably just uh, link these two tables with the uh, primary key foreign key concept okay so uh, any doubts guys I'm sure that you all know what a primary key and a foreign key is and uh, if at all anybody has a problem please let me know okay so uh, Rodney says I don't know what's a foreign key okay uh, so see Rodney the thing is we have something called as a primary key and a foreign key okay and we use these two columns when we want uh, when we want to use a combination of two different tables right so if you consider the example of uh, this one then you can see that there are a number of uh, columns here and uh, not everything is matching with the details in that put in in the other table okay so only customer id is the only common field okay so there's a customer id here and even in this table we have a customer id now the thing is the customer id is a primary key because it's uh, it's constant and it's unique for each and every single record over here so each and every customer here will have a separate customer ID okay so no two customers will have the same customer ID okay and uh, over here the transactions here which has the invoice number the description of the product that was purchased the uh, stock code the quantity all these uh, things are sorted by the customer ID okay so if you find a particular customer ID more than once then well here you can find the customer ID more than once that's because a customer would have made uh, more than one transactions he might have uh, uh, you know come on to their uh, you know uh, he might have bought from the same uh, person more than twice or thrice or four, four times or something like that right so supposing i go back to this person and i buy his products since it's a retail store i buy products say uh, 50 50 times then i'll have 50 different times my customer id will appear here okay but however here i'll uh, it will not appear again because uh, it's a primary key right here so that's the difference so here the uniqueness is there that's why it's called the primary key in this case and here there's no uniqueness for the customer id Okay, it can appear more than once and that's why it's a foreign key over here and what we're going to do is for every customer ID over here Right, so for uh, every customer ID over here We're going to link it to uh, this particular table with the help of uh, this customer ID since the customer ID is a common field in both the cases I can uh, make a table which would uh, show which customer which would probably display all these details along with the other uh, columns, okay now that's because I have customer uh, ID which is common in both the tables and uh, using that I can link the uh, fields that are there in this table and which are there in the customers table right so that's what I'm gonna do now the similar thing is also there in my uh, Oracle database so let me show you that so this is my uh, SQL developer GUI okay so I have uh, two tables here I have customers table and I have transactions table right and then I have a final table but uh, this is not something which is relevant so this is not uh, something we'll be using but uh, we have the same two tables customer table and transactions table as I showed you we have these two here and we have almost the same fields over here right because uh, if you see the customer table we have the customer ID we have the customer name we have the customer number and the email address okay 
and uh, here we have additionally we have the address city and country now what I did is when I imported uh, this excel file into my database I did not I ignored these three columns right I didn't want these uh, details because uh, I was not going to use them in my data warehouse so if you see our problem statement here it only says you have to find out the uh, customers who have the lower number of purchases it doesn't mention that you need their uh, country details or city details or anything for that matter of fact so so because so for that reason imp uh, using the country city and address fields would be a waste so that's why I have not imported these into my data warehouse I have only the customer ID the customer name my contact number and my email address fields okay this would be uh, sufficient to find out the customer details okay and to find the purchases right and to uh, see who has uh, all the lowest purchases we can use the other table so in the other table that is a transactions table we have uh, this quantity field right we have this column this quantity table basically represents how many uh, products this particular person purchased so this uh, person with this customer ID right, purchased 71 products right and then you have uh, another person who has purchased 67 projects, uh, products and so on so you also have people who purchase only seven or nine okay now our problem statement is such that we have to find those people who have made less uh, a very less number of purchases okay now if we define uh, uh, less to be 10 then we can extract the data such that uh, the data warehouse gets the uh, details of only those people who have uh, made purchases of less than 10 items per uh, order right so per transaction whoever has made less than 10 uh, purchases so this person has made seven and this one this person has made nine right so we can get a list of uh, those customers right using the customer ID we can go to that uh, customer table and get his name we can get his uh, email address his phone number and other details okay and we can uh, publish all those things and we can probably uh, export them to another uh, CSV file like this or we can put that into our uh, database uh, basically into anything which would uh, support data visualization right so that's what we want and uh, this function is what our talent is going to do okay and what I'm going to do for that purposes I'm going to do a lookup from uh, this table onto my customers table right so this is my transactions table and from here I'm going to use the customer ID field to do a uh, lookup to my customers table to obtain their uh, name email address and uh, phone number and all those things so first of all uh, let me introduce you to our uh, talent interface okay so this was the Oracle SQL database which I uh, showed you earlier and uh, this one is the talent right so talent open studio this is basically the data integration version of the uh, project okay now what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to show you how talent works I'm going to show you the layout over here first of all so on the left here you can see that you have uh, something called as job design we have uh, standard you have demo and then you have various other projects here right so all these are the different projects that I have uh, created okay and uh, when we say job design so job design is what you use to create your uh, jobs on the UI here okay so in our case in talent whatever actions that we perform right we got to do it with uh, with respect to a UI so we don't have a code this is not a coding interface okay so of course this uh, talent runs on Java but it uh, we don't but talent is known for its GUI okay so we can uh, drag and drop the uh, items on the job task so this is the uh, uh, job design uh, taskbar and we can uh, first of all create a new task okay supposing I want to create a new data warehouse by importing details from another uh, database then we can start by creating a new job design okay okay and then create a new project in that job design so right now we are in my uh, local project so I'm gonna create a new job design okay I want to say create standard job let's give a name to this particular job so let's say data warehousing BI session okay and uh, demonstration is the purpose so I'm just gonna copy paste the same details into my description field also and I'm gonna say finish okay now uh, what you can see here this is the job designer so this is where I can get all the data from my different uh, databases or fields uh, files and uh, get them to my data warehouse so I can run my I can write my projects over here and then on the right hand side you have your palette okay so from your palette you can choose the files or the database from which you from where you want to import your data okay supposing you want to import from a flat file then you can just uh, go to this uh, heading file here so under file you have input right so under input you have all these options so if you choose any of these options here and if you just uh, drag and drop them over here then you can use them as a means to import data you just need to set the path where the excel file is stored okay and uh, you can uh, choose that and when you just enter further fields you can get the data in from these excel files to your data warehouse okay to your talent okay but uh, excel files is a very simple thing and I don't want to show you that let me show you how to import uh, 
this large data from our database, right? So we have also other options here, like big data, big data, intelli uh, business intelligence. We have business, we have cloud, right? So we have integrations with uh, a numerous technologies here. And uh, what we would be concentrating now on is that of databases, right? So I have my Oracle database. So I'm going to go to Oracle under databases and under uh, Oracle, I'm going to say T Oracle input. Okay, let's see where is it? Uh, T Oracle input is right here. So I'm going to just click on T Oracle input and paste it here. Okay, I'm going to drag and drop it here. And uh, now that I've done this, I can use this as a means to get my uh, data in from from my database. Okay, so this is my uh, Oracle database, right? So let me configure my input first. So first of all, I need to configure all these uh, details uh, with respect to my host, the port number on which uh, it's hosted, the uh, database name, the username, the password, and all these things. Okay, so uh, let me first start off from the host. Uh, it's hosted on localhost, right? It's not on any server. It's not on any remote server, so I'm just going to say low close and the port number is 1521. So these are details that I got when I was uh, when I installed this Oracle SQL server, right? So you'll have to probably enter the same details when uh, you create one. And 1521 is actually the default port on which Oracle's uh, Oracle server is usually hosted. So you, know, you shouldn't have any problem there. So database here is XE in my case. So okay, and then my uh, username is Vardhan and the password is something we have to set over here okay all right now i've done this my connection type is oracle ssid my database version is 11.6 all right so all these yields here are uh, correct now let's check my schema the schema is basically is what is going to uh, uh, you know map your fields from your database to your uh, talent right so this is your data warehouse so we have to define a schema here to add details here Okay, so uh, now that we have all these fields here, now let me go back to my uh, database, right? So we are in my customer table and in my customer table, I have four fields, customer ID, customer name, customer number, and email address. So let me add uh, these four fields in my talent, okay? First column is gonna be customer ID. This is gonna be customer name. This is gonna be customer phone number this will be customer email address all right so that's all fine basically the data type that it's coming from is all bad care okay so if you see here the uh, data type that is uh, it currently is in is bad care okay they have different sizes though but email address uh, be it email address or contact number or name or id all are in bad care to type so i'm gonna just uh, say the input also to be as uh, bad care right so it's all where care 2 everything is technically where care 2 it's it's picking up uh, the same data type by default all right so let's define the length over here though let's say the customer id is uh, going to be five characters in length i'm going to say the length for the name is going to be around uh, 30 the phone number to be around 20 uh, Technically, it's 10, so let's do a buffer of another 10 and say 20. Email address is going to be another 20 characters. Okay, uh, the customer ID. Let me just increase the length to 10. So these uh, these are the length of the fields uh, which are going to be stored. Okay, so I'm going to set the length over here, and I'm going to say okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I need to set the uh, default query. Okay, so I'm going to say select star from customers select star from customers okay because customers is the name of the table in my oracle uh, database right so i'm going to choose the uh, table name here i'm going to say the table name here also okay there's something i forgot earlier you got to mention the table name that you want to import from and you got to specify the query you want to run okay now let me run the same query in my oracle and let's see what details i get so i'm going to feed the same query here okay so it's going to be select star from customers so when I say this, I have this table option here. Okay, now let me just uh, run this query. Okay, so I've got the same details in here also, right? So my uh, table name is customers. So let me go to my talent and uh, set that it's set as customers already. And this is the query, same query I'll be running here by default. All right, I'm gonna save this. So uh, I have set my first 
data in, right? So I've got my customer's data in here. So let me uh, say another T Oracle input, and I'm gonna configure another input for my transactions table, right? So I have another table for transactions, so let me set that also. And as you can notice, every time you add a new uh, input or configure a new output, then you'll have to add these details, right? You have to add the host name, database name, uh, username, password, and all these things. So instead of this, you have a shortcut here. So you have a shortcut with respect to metadata. So metadata is something that I explained earlier, right? So it basically contains data about your data. So under metadata tab, if you see, you have uh, DB connections, you have uh, file, all these things, right? So, so if you want to create a standard input for uh, data coming in from a particular database, then you can just set it once over here, okay? So under DB connections, you can set uh, one connection and it can be used in any number of jobs in this particular project. So instead of, uh, uh, so this time probably I'll have to anyways enter the uh, details of this particular uh, table, okay? But uh, if I set the same thing through my metadata here, then I can use the same metadata every time I want to import data to my uh, talent warehouse. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, this time let me show you how to do it through metadata. I'm gonna say uh, create connection. You wanna say the name of the connection is db input, all right? Let's say database input purpose to get data from Oracle to talent. Let's have the description also and uh, say finish. Okay, we got to choose a database type over here. Okay, now the database type that I want to uh, import is uh, that of Oracle, right? And I'm going to do it with the help of Oracle with the service name. So when you choose that, you have your uh, login, you have your password and all these details. So in place of your login, give your username here. So in my case, it's Vardhan. Okay, password is uh, this one. The server is localhost and the port is 1521. Service name is XE. Okay, now to verify if the uh, connection is correct, you can uh, click on check over here. So as you can see, the DB input connection successful uh, message has come. Okay, this means that your uh, talent is able to successfully communicate with your Oracle, which is hosted on uh, port number 1521. Okay, so now that I have uh, done this, I can uh, straight away say uh, finish and add this uh, metadata over here. Okay, now I'm just gonna click on the uh, drag and drop this DB input over here. When I do that, I can choose this to be for either uh, input or output or anything here because under Oracle, you have all these options, right? So I have uh, chosen this metadata for any of these options here. So if I want to use it as input, I can do that also. If I want to use it as output, I can do it even at that time. So I'm gonna say T Oracle input and I'm gonna say okay. Now, as you can see, my uh, DB input here, this is the metadata which has these properties already inbuilt, okay? So in case of this one, I had to give it manually, but uh, here my metadata, I specified it once and it's already replicated. So the advantage here is that even if there are 10 different uh, tables from which you want to get data in, then you don't need to add 10 different database connections in your uh, talent, right? When you're creating your metadata, if you create the database connection once, and then uh, using that one time, you can establish 10 different connections. You can uh, get data from 10 different tables or replicate the same thing again and again. So that is the advantage here, right? So that's the thing. So next, let's uh, give the table name here, okay? So the table is uh, transactions table, right? So that's what I'm gonna enter here. And the query that we have to run is select star from transactions. I O N S transactions. Okay, now let me also verify if this uh, query is running in my my SQL developer. Okay, and let me run this query. And yes, it's able to fetch data from my transactions table also. Now, uh, going back to my talent, now that I've set this, let me go and edit my schema now. Okay, so where do I have my schema option? Okay, it's right here. So I'm gonna say edit schema, and I'm gonna configure all the different uh, columns and fields over here. If I'm not wrong, there are uh, five different uh, columns here, invoice number, description, quantity, customer ID, and product, right? So I'm gonna rename everything here. I'm gonna say invoice number, description, quantity. What else do we have? We have uh, customer ID and product ID, right? All right. So even the uh, details here have uh, been set to where care. Okay, now this basically means that I'm getting the data from my database and the data type of that is Varchar, right? So 
as you can see from uh, here, when I click on this, all my data, all the fields have are of varchar 2 data type. So that's why I'm setting them as varchar 2 over here. And I'm going to set the default length for everything to be as, uh, well, not for everything. So for invoice number, let me give a length of 10. For description, I'm going to give a length of uh, 100 for quantity. Let's say 5 for customer ID. It's going to be 10. And for product ID, again, let me give a length of 10. So I'm going to say OK. So my schema is basically set for both of uh, these files. Now what I've got to do is now I have uh, configured two inputs. Now I have to get these inputs into my talent. Now to check if my data is coming in from my uh, data sources appropriately, let me uh, just check the T log row, right? So the component name is uh, T log row, but since I can't find it here, I can also search for it here. So T log row when I just put uh, enter, I have these options, right? So and just uh, capture this T-log row and drop it here. Now, you can create connections from here. You can say main and you can establish a connection over here, okay? And uh, similarly, I can use another T-log row here, okay? Drag it, I can paste it here and check. Actually, no, I won't do that. So I can check if my data is coming to my T-log uh, row from here, right? So my component is added over here. So uh, let's see. So let's just check the schema once. So as you can see, these are the details that I had entered in my uh, source, and uh, it's already been mapped since I gave a connection between to uh, between my log row and my input one. These fields have been mapped here also. So I'll be getting my customer ID, customer name, phone, and my email uh, uh, details here. Okay. Now let me just uh, click on OK, go down, and uh, yeah, the field separator would be this pipeline. I'm going to say print header, print content with log4j. All right. So now let me just uh, save this and let me run this. Now you can see the button here, right? When I say run, it would build my uh, job basically and it should be able to import my data from there. As you can see, all my data is being imported uh, to this. Uh, let me just minimize my screen. So as you can see, all my uh, details are here, right? So customer ID, customer name, customer phone and customer email were the four different uh, fields that I had uh, configured to enter into my T-log row from my input. And they have come, they have, uh, the headers are these and the details are here. So for customer ID, it's thousand and the customer name is uh, this one here. And then his phone number is uh, right here, right? So this is his name here, this entire row and things like that. So each and every field is separated by a pipeline. So that's because I had uh, in the component editor over here, because in the component editor over here, I had set the field separator to be pipeline. Okay, so that is the thing. So since my component editor has a pipeline, so every field in my uh, data that is coming through my T-log row, it has been separated by a uh, field separator that is pipeline. Now, if I just uh, go back here, as you can see, by just clicking on run over here or over here, you can uh, get your uh, output. Okay, this is, I've just done this to show you how uh, the data comes in. Okay. So now that our data is coming in successfully, I'm just going to uh, delete this T-log row, okay? Because we don't really need it for our uh, demonstration. So you can just click on this clear here to clear your uh, log screen. So now that we've established our connection, what we've got to do is we've got to merge these two tables, right? So we've got to create a lookup field and I've got to make sure that my tables uh, are joined. So for that, we have another uh, component here called T, T join. And when you hit enter, you have this right so under processing you have this option of t join so you can just uh, drag and drop here and what this would do is it would basically join these uh, two different inputs so we have the source input of uh, this one and this one right so it would basically merge the two of them so let's first uh, create one link over here to my t join and similarly let me create one over here from my input to to my T log. Now, if you can see here, since this was the first connection that was established, this took up the name of uh, main, okay? And my second connection took up the name of lookup. Now, that's because uh, this table here, this will look up to the customer ID field in this table and match the subsequent rows or entities with this particular uh, columns, right? So, what this uh, lookup would do is it would uh, use the customer ID field in my uh, in this table and it would do a lookup to this particular uh, table and match the remaining rows and columns 
right? So let's configure the schema for that first of all. Since we are uh, joining these two, we are using this uh, T joiner, okay? So T join, let's uh, go to the component and uh, edit all the other details here. So we have to check this include lookup columns and output. Uh, this means that at the output that comes out of uh, this join, we want to also include the uh, fields which are present in my uh, lookup field, right? So that's why I've checked this column. So besides that, here it says column mapping, right? So we have to always map uh, these two different tables using one lookup field, right? So it's either one lookup field or uh, the primary key, foreign key relationship. So both are the same. Uh, so that's what we got to define here. We got to define which is the primary key, which is the foreign key, or which is the lookup of failure. Okay. So first of all, let's uh, go to uh, let's go edit the schema here, all right? So we have uh, the two different uh, fields here. We have the input field one and the input uh, field two over here. So let's add all of these. Uh, I'm going to say Control A and I'm going to move it here. All right. So I'm going to join all these things. And from the second table, I'm going to move my invoice number my uh, description well I don't want to move description so I'm going to move my quantity customer ID is already there so I would uh, then want to move my product ID okay now the reason I'm not moving description is because I don't uh, need a description uh, as per my problem statement there's no need for uh, description okay uh, similarly even product ID is not really needed for me so I can actually remove this also right so I have these uh, so these will basically be my output fields my customer ID customer name customer phone customer email address invoice number and quantity right so these will be my uh, output fields and uh, now that I've set my schema even the uh, length has been auto picked right so this is the nice thing about uh, talent things are pretty simple and it's all straightforward so you can just click on ok so guys uh, now that we've uh, set our schema here let's add the columns that we want in our output from our lookup table ok so this is our lookup table and from here what all columns do we, do we want in our output so that we've got to include over here right so let me add the uh, different uh, entries so I ideally want my customer ID to be there so I'm gonna say row 2 dot customer ID uh, row 2 here uh, basically means this table right so and then I want my uh, quantity to come and that I'm gonna set it as uh, row 2 dot quantity I'm gonna add another uh, entry here and that's gonna be for invoice number okay so I'm gonna say this is row two dot invoice number. All right. So now that we've uh, done our column mapping here, this is pretty uh, good enough. Now let's go down and set our key definition. So here we set our primary key and secondary key, uh, foreign key definition. Okay. So let me add an entry here. So the primary key is going to be customer ID. In the lookup table, it's going to be row two dot customer ID. Okay. So with the help of these two fields, we're going to find our, we're going to make our, we do our lookup. And another advantage here is that I can also uh, go back to schema and edit the uh, data type of my quantity. Okay, uh, since I'll be using quantity as my uh, differentiator for my uh, problem statement, I can set the uh, data type to be something else. I can set it to be integer. Okay, so I can do this and uh, set the length to be either five or ten. Right? I can give okay. So now this basically means that. Or even though all these are in string format, my quantity can be an integer. And the best part about talent is, I don't need to change anything over here, okay? So I can get the data in from any data type. The data that comes in can be of any data type, okay? But the data that I store or the data that I finally export, that I can change the data type of that particular data. So that's the advantage. So quantity comes in the form of varchar 2 data type and I'm converting it to, into integer from inside talent. Right, so that's the uh, thing about advantage with talent. So I'm just gonna say okay now. All right, so now that I've uh, done this, uh, I think I'm uh, done everything with respect to T join. Okay, so now let's go back to my problem statement for a minute. Now, what they say is they wish to find out only those customers who have a low number of purchases. Okay, so it is quantity which defines how many purchases that they have. Right, so I'm gonna go back to my talent here. Now that I've added my T login over here, I will be getting all my details and all my uh, data into this component, right? So my uh, input one would be giving me uh, those rows from uh, customers and this would be giving me those rows and fields uh, and records from my transactions table. So I would be getting approximately 50,000 rows from here and 10,000 rows from here. Now that I have uh, all these uh, rows over here, what I have to do is I have to filter them based on the quantity. 
and our problem statement here says that we have to find out those customers who have a low number of purchases and if you remember we define that uh, when if you want to find the low number of purchases it's not exactly defined so let's say we want to find those people who have less than 10 transactions or uh, whose quantity is less than 10 right who have purchased less than 10 items so for that we can just uh, go back to our uh, data warehouse and create another filter or component here which would filter out those people who have less than uh, who have purchased less than 10 items per transaction right so for that let's again go back to my uh, palette here and search for this component filter so as you can see there is t filter row and t filter columns okay but i want to filter rows so i'm just going to uh, drag this one and drop it here so t log filter okay and i want to uh, connect these two right so now i'm going to give a connection here and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to define the the filter criteria okay so i'm going to uh, add an entry here but before that let me go to my uh, schema and as you can see i have uh, all these uh, entries here and the same fields are here also right and even the uh, data type has been picked up by default uh, that's the talents functionality so this will be the input that will come to my uh, filter and this will be the output that will go right so let's just uh, click on ok and now uh, coming to my uh, criteria for uh, filtering I want to filter my quantity right so the input column that I want to uh, check is that of quantity okay and the function that I would want to do is uh, empty now for now let, let's just leave it empty and the operator is if it's uh, lower than or equal to right so if it's lower than or equal to 10 that is the value that is present in this column if it's less than or equal to 10 then I want to filter only those uh, rows and I want to send only them okay so basically my uh, command is also uh, set over here all right so even my uh, schema and my uh, function is set over here and now what I have to do is I have to set the output for my data warehouse. Okay, now where do I want to uh, extract these uh, results and store these uh, this data warehouse, All right? So let's say I want to store it in an Excel. Then I have to uh, just go back to files over here. Let me just uh, type file and hit enter. And uh, I have these options, right? I have T file input Excel, T file output Excel. So I'm gonna choose T file output Excel and uh, drop it here. Uh, this would essentially mean that the uh, results that are filtered over here in this component this would uh, come and uh, get stored in this excel file which i'm going to create now okay so let me uh, connect these two also i'm going to say filter and put it here and supposing if i want to also uh, get a list of all those people who have more than 10 transactions then i can do that also by using this option of reject so whichever rows get uh, rejected right whichever get rejected uh, from moving to this particular file those can go to another file right so we have that functionality also that I'll I'll show you even that but before that so let me just uh, show you how this looks like so I've said uh, row filter t file output excel and uh, let me edit the component over here and uh, let's say the file name is uh, this one dwhbi demo all right I'm going to say include the header. So header basically is the part which would say customer ID, phone number and all those things. So I'm going to say include header. All right. And uh, I'm going to say define all columns to auto size. That is just uh, to auto size those uh, columns. Right. So it's all fine now. Everything is set and my uh, file would be saved in this particular path. Okay. And this would be the name of my file which would be stored when I run this. So I've copied this path. Now what I've got to do is uh, I need to save this job and execute this. Okay, when I executed that, it's uh, showing me an error over here. Okay, so the error uh, it shows is that the error in the components properties type mismatch cannot convert from string to integer. Okay, not a big deal. I can fix this error. Okay, we can fix that by first of all uh, checking our schema, right? So here, if you see the schema here, it says uh, quantity is type integer, right? But over here, quantity is still type string. So that is what we need to change. We got to change the uh, type over here to integer. So I'm going to say number and I'm going to click on OK. Fine. Okay, so uh, now let's go back to this file, 
right and uh, let me edit the schema and set the properties correctly okay so it's not able to convert this right so the type of string and the db type is number so this is the problem so so i can change this uh, also to integer right so uh, integers right here so i'm going to choose this as uh, integer database type i'm going to click on okay and uh, now let me go back to the uh, t log join and check the schema over here okay so this is my table and quantity this is integer this is also integer it's coming here and now it will get converted over here into this so now it shouldn't directly throw me any error now let me just save this and run this job okay building job okay it's showing an error again cannot convert integer to string okay so let's see what the error is now okay so we have a problem here invoice number right so this is the problem so invoice number it should uh, be row 2 dot invoice number so this was the uh, type mismatch error that we were getting right so no problem okay so again it's changing right so all right i'm going to save this now and uh, we wouldn't have the type mismatch error now okay great so it says connected and disconnected as you can see the uh, output over here we've got around uh, these many rows from this uh, table and about 50,000 rows from the uh, table here and we've got it here and then we would have probably joined these two with the help of the customer ID uh, field and then to my uh, T log row it would have filtered all the fields so we've got the input has basically been 8342 number of rows 8342 rows out of which 841 rows got filtered and stored in this excel file awesome right so uh, let's just go to this path and check if our uh, field contents are correct so this is the path where the file is stored right so i'm going to copy this path i'm going to go back here and paste this path so this was the file that we created right and yes as you can see we've got customer id customer name customer phone the email address invoice number and the quantity okay and the best part is the quantity here is sorted and it's only that which is less than 10 right so that was the criteria that we had set we had filtered for those fields to be only less than 10 and uh, to show you further proof what i can do is i can uh, do this i'll add a filter okay and if you can see here the only options here are 1 to 10 okay that means nobody whose quantity was 90 or 100 plus has been added over here right so so this is how simple uh, talent is and this is what uh, data warehousing is in uh, basics right so this is a very simple example that i've showed you where uh, you can get data in to your data warehouse by filtering some data from the database and uh, probably you can use this data to make your analysis or visualization on uh, tableau or click through or any other uh, uh, data visualization tool okay but uh, there was another thing that i promised you right i uh, told you that you will have a filtered row and you will have another uh, rejected row so if this was the filtered column then i can uh, probably have another uh, excel here i can say t file output excel so okay so t file output excel i'm going to paste it here and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to start one i'm going to say reject and here so the rejected uh, fields or rows and columns are going to go into this particular field okay so i'm going to name this also as rejected data all right so this is also going to be present in the same path and uh, let me edit the uh, i'm going to say define all the columns size i'm going to say include header and yep i'm going to save this and run it again when i run it again i'll have the same uh, list of fields over here right i'll have the same rows over here right so as you can see the same 841 rows have been added to this file okay the filtered results are here and the remaining ones which were rejected they have gone to my new file and this file is called the rejected one so if i go back to that uh, same path this was the original one and the rejected data is here so when i open here you can see that the only options here are those of above 10 okay so if i just uh, show you with a filter column right so you can see that there is nothing less than 10 so that's the thing so that's how you filter data that's how you get uh, data in and uh, all these things 
so that's how you work with uh, talent guys right so you get data and so the same thing here you can also store it to some database right so instead of uh, having a file to excel for this i can just delete this and uh, i can just delete this and uh, let me go to databases first of all all right so here i'm going to say oracle and uh, t oracle output okay i'm going to paste it here and uh, now if i am going to say reject or uh, yeah reject right so all these rejected uh, entries would go into this particular file of mine so let me add the components and edit the components here the host details uh, here it's uh, local host okay port is 1521 database is uh, xe right yes uh, it is xe and my username is vardhan my password is edureka all right so and then you have uh, the action on table right so the action is going to be create table okay so when we say create table we've got to give the uh, table name also and the table name let's say rejected output okay well i'm guessing there is nothing by that name yep there is nothing here by uh, that name so we have customers final table and transactions right so we will have a new table that will be formed over there so which the action is uh, going to be insert supposing you want to insert or update an existing file then you can choose the various options but in our case it would be create a new table and the action would be insert okay so let me just uh, save this okay and run this now so it seems like my new table has been uh, created here let me just go back to my sql here oracle table and we need to refresh this yes so as you can see there's a new uh, table that's been created and when you see here these are the uh, different uh, fields error message was another uh, field that gets auto generated and if you look at the contents of the field you have all these right so guys that's how you get your data back into your uh, database right so earlier i showed you how to do it uh, and store it in an excel file now i've showed you how to create new table and uh, how to get your data warehouse uh, data back into your uh, database so that's the end of my uh, demonstration all my uh, queries have been passed successfully now let me just quickly go back to my slides for a minute and uh, yeah this hands on is what i uh, completed showed you how to get uh, data into your data warehouse so yeah so i think that brings us to the end of the session and let me just summarize whatever i did in a minute right so first of all i spoke about uh, the need for business intelligence and then i told you what is business intelligence why you need it uh, for your business and what is the role of data warehouse and then i spoke about uh, data warehousing right i gave we went into the depth of data warehousing and spoke about the key terminologies in data warehouse uh, we have the etl we have uh, data marts we have uh, the metadata and all these things and then finally we spoke about the uh, architecture of uh, the data warehouse and we finished off the session with the hands on demonstration of uh, how to populate your data warehouse using talent so guys that's it and uh, thank you for being in the session that brings us to the end of the session today probably we'll have another session on uh, data warehousing and i'll uh, talk about more advanced concepts like uh, schemas right i uh, spoke about the uh, three different uh, types of schemas right like star schema snowflake schema galaxy schema all these things so i will talk about all these things in my uh, next session and probably also i will talk about dimensions and fact tables and uh, all these things right so it doesn't seem like you guys have any doubts so if you do have any doubts please put that in the chat box right okay so thank you guys thank you for being in the session probably i'll see you all until next time okay see you i hope you enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our edureka channel to learn more happy learning